Hey guys, I hope everyone's doing fine during these crazy times. Uh, but you know what? We got WrestleMania around the corner in a couple of days. Uh, WrestleMania 36. Uh, weird time, you know, going around the world. Weird time in the wrestling business. Uh, be the first WrestleMania w with without a crowd. I know a little bit of debate whether they should have postponed it. Maybe save it for the summer. Uh, you know what? I, I maybe you know the plan. They should have, you know. Postpone it, maybe have it in June, when hopefully you know the world will be back to normal by then. But you know Vince McMahon made the call to still have the event. You know, and it'll be like pretty much the first time WrestleMania has been pre-taped. Um, but again, again, crazy times. But you know, during WrestleMania season, you know, I'm looking back at some of the old WrestleManias. So I just wanted to do a quick, quick kind of like review, or just you know look back at uh, WrestleMania 29. You know, back you know a couple of years ago, before the WWE Network, I was in this like thing. I was like, oh, let me collect all the WrestleManias on DVD. And you know, nowadays, you know, you got the WWE Network. You could go on and watch any WrestleMania at any time. But this is the only, pretty much the, this is the only WrestleMania that I have on Blu-ray DVD. Uh, so WrestleMania tw uh, 29. Uh, this is going all the way back to 2013. Here's a side view of it. Pretty much, pretty much one of the last WrestleManias has actually had a had a um like a number to it, because nowadays they don't refer to a number because Vince McMahon doesn't want to age the product, which I think is stupid. I mean, Super Bowl has like numbers. I think that it makes the WrestleMania special when you have like WrestleMania 35. You can tell them apart and stuff like that, but. That's how you want to do it nowadays. This is the back of the DVD. I'm going to open it up. We got this. So this is basically a two-disc two set. Um, this took place... Um, when was the exact date? Uh, probably April 2013 at some point. Um, it was at uh, MetLife Stadium, so you know it was a risk because usually, like WrestleManias that were in the tri-state area, you know, New York and Jersey, would be at Madison Square Garden, and the tradition was every ten years you had WrestleMania one at Madison Square Garden, then you would have had WrestleMania ten, WrestleMania twenty, WrestleMania thirty. Technically, would have been at Madison Square Garden, but now. You know, with WWE, everything's bigger. So, Madison Square Garden is kind of small for WrestleMania. Good for maybe a SummerSlam, but not for WrestleMania. Now, they're more going into, like, stadiums, outdoor arenas, and stuff like that. So, they decided, you know, 29 would be at MetLife Stadium. Uh, and it was more of a risk because, you know, April, you know, the weather, if it's going to be too cold, it could even snow. Luckily, this event they had they had good good weather, and of course they came back last year, uh, and, they, and they did WrestleMania 35 was at uh, MetLife Stadium, so they kind of came back a couple years later. So this was actually the first one, headlined by The Rock defending the WWE title against John Cena. This is the rematch from the previous WrestleMania. Um, so let's get let's talk about some of the matches. Um, see what I can remember. Uh, let's see here. We had you know a six man tag match that began the, the show. Randy Orton and Sheamus and the Big Show against the Shield. You know early Shield stuff. Um, one thing about this WrestleMania, I think this was like one of the first WrestleManias I felt disappointed in, in the build-up and the card. I feel like certain things were like thrown together at last minute. Uh, I know like the Randy, I know like Rock and Cena, that was kind of planned. But other matches I felt were not really like well developed, well like thought out. You know, I, I'm a, I go all the way back to like, you know, WrestleMania 6 when Hogan took on, you know, the ultimate challenge against the Warrior. And I, you know, listening to like podcasts, you know, something to wrestle with when they talk about that, how they build, started planning out WrestleMania, you know, like, you know, like, like in November, you know, 
while they start planning out the main events and stuff and the matches. I felt like kind of like this one, like the matches were not, even like today, you know, especially the last couple of years, I feel like the WrestleMania ma matches are not really planned out ahead of time. And, and it's kind of like not enough build to them. Uh, so you get that that six man tag match, you know, again, you know, against this is like the opening with you know the Shield were still heels at the time. Uh, we have Ryback versus Mark Henry. I remember them building that up. Um, Ryback, I mean, has 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 uh, has a pretty good uh, podcast nowadays, and he's got a YouTube channel. Um, we got. W Tag Team WWE Tag Team Championship match Daniel Bryan and Kane against Dolph Ziggler and Big E. Boy, if you look at Big E back then, to compare to now, like now nowadays he has all this personality uh, compared to how he was, you know, when he was first brought, brought up from NXT. Chris Jericho versus Fandango. That's like a that's an odd match now when you think about it. And you look at like Chris Jericho and Fandango. Uh, I guess at the time, you know, they were really trying to build up that Fandango. Um, and I guess, you know, there's certain things didn't work out. You know, you look look now, you know, like how Chris Jericho's career is kind of like, especially with AEW now. And Fandango, I mean, with the, you know, he had found a little success with the Fashion Police, with, with Tyler Breeze in, in the last couple of years. But, you know, injuries have kind of, like, really, like, put a stop to his career. And I know he's out with another injury. So, it's just, it's just like, you know, hopefully he can get back healthy. And then after that, we got Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger for the uh, heavyweight title. For the world heavyweight title. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. And I think they, were, they had high hopes at the time for Del Rio and Swagger uh, had high hopes for, for Del Rigo as, as a face. This is when they made him a baby face. Um, I think that it, it didn't feel right. I mean, Del Rigo's character, I think, is more of a heel. And him as a baby face didn't, didn't work out. They were just trying to... WWE was just trying to get that Mexican baby face wrestler to, like, just as, as big as Rey Mysterio. And they've tried it before. It, it didn't work with, with Sin Cara... And it didn't work with Del Rio. You can't really replace Rey Mysterio. Um, you know, Mysterio or like, you know, and, and we're getting another Eddie Guerrero. There, there is a chance with Andrade, if they're very really careful, they can really make him a, a top star. I can I could definitely see, you know, him having a strong heel uh, run, uh, which he's having now. But it's kind of like, I mean, could be better, better, you know, booking. And I can also see him as a babyface having a strong baby face. So um, hopefully, you know, booking, you know, the way book wrestling booking is now, they don't screw it up, but they probably will. Uh, so Del Rio was the champion. Swagger was, you know, the challenger. I guess this is the time they were really trying to build um, Jack Swagger up. Um, it's not the Jack Swagger we see today at, you know, AEW. Um, what's his name in AEW? Jack Hager or something. I don't know. But now he's got the... You know, the MMA background now. So he was totally different back then. I think if he, if, he, if we take the Jack Swagger today, bring him back, you know, to when this event took place, I think maybe the uh, match would, would, would have gotten a lot over. Then we have what many people say would, was the true main event of the card. Undertaker versus CM Punk, which is this would have been CM Punk's last WrestleMania. Uh, the following year, he was penciled in to take on Triple H, but that, but you know, of course, you know, you know what happened. You know, he walked out and disagreements and all that. So that didn't take place. So and, you know, and again, like you know, Punk was the champion leading into the, you know, le leading into like the year. You know, he had that long run at, with as a WWE champion. So technically, you know, Punk, you know, you know, thought maybe the main event, main event should have been a triple threat match with him included you know, with The Rock and John Cena, you know, and then he would finally drop the title. So um, that was a debate. But again, you, you have The Undertaker, and you need, you need an opponent for The Undertaker. So this, this, was, this was pre uh, the streak ending. But it was, it was a pretty good match, I, I would say. Um, I think that AJ Styles is in, in the same boat that CM Punk is in back then. 
you know, if him, him today with taking on The Undertaker, you know, they just need an opponent for The Undertaker. They, they need a heel for The Undertaker to go through. Then we had Brock Lesnar versus Triple H in a no holds barred match. Uh, if Triple H loses, he must retire. Uh, of course, Triple H won the match. Uh, this is before Brock Lesnar. I mean, this was before they really built Brock Lesnar to be like this complete monster with like these suplexes out of you know suplex machine, uh, suplex city. Uh, so they had him against Triple H. Triple H at the time was 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 uh, a baby face. Then you had then you had the big match, you know, uh, The Rock versus John Cena. You know, John Cena getting that win back. Um, I don't think it was good as as their match from twenty eight, but now they try to add, uh, you know, with the with the title being on the line. And I think this was the last of The Rock being in in, in a in a match. I know he came back and you know made an appearance at WrestleMania thirty two, and he just had this weird, with the Wyatt family, he had an altercation, and he had like a quick like squash match with uh, Woman, I believe. Um, so, but then, but then, that's pretty much it. I know he was rumored to be Ronda Rousey's tag partner against Triple H and uh, Stephanie McMahon at WrestleMania 34, I think. But I guess with movie careers now, I guess he's he. he couldn't do it. Um, and then you have some special features on here. You have, I guess, the pre-show, which was Wade Barrett versus The Miz for the IC title. Can't believe that, you know, the IC title was on the main card. Um, so that, that was pretty much it. And then you have the one disc is the uh, Hall of Fame ceremony. And at the time, for the Hall of Fame in 2013, you had Mick Foley, Tris Stratus, Booker T, Bob Backlund, Donald Trump, Bruno Sammartino. And some um, special features, you have um, Monday Night Raw, you have Triple H and Brock Lesnar's contract signing. Uh, Monday Night Raw, uh, CM Punk wants to end the streak. And then you have a Le Monday Night Raw Legends Q&A session with The Rock and John Cena. So uh, definitely looking back, I mean, this was only, um, wow, seven years ago. But it, but it definitely feels like a lifetime ago. I, I always say sometimes a year in a wrestling business almost seems like five or ten years. Just how different parts, different things happen. And, I mean, let's look at the card and see, like, you know, who's actually still an active member of, of the WWE roster today. You know, you look at, you know, uh, The Shield, on, you know, well, not counting Dean Ambrose now, but you got Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. For, you know, Brock Lesnar's still a big star. Uh, Randy Orton, you know, that's, that's pretty much it, you know, Def definitely you look at it, you, you look at it, you're like, oh, all these people are not, not even part of the, the roster anymore, yeah, but that's, that's WrestleMania 29.